Hi again. This is our third and final program dealing with Hess's Law, and I want to look at its application today with something called enthalpies of formation. Let's begin by looking at what that term means. The enthalpy of formation is defined as the enthalpy change associated with forming one mole of a substance from its elements at standard thermodynamic conditions. Thermodynamic conditions are slightly different than STP. You might remember from the mole unit, standard temperature and pressure are 100 kilopascals and zero degrees Celsius. Standard thermodynamic conditions are 100 kilopascals and 298 or 25 degrees Celsius. Now, as I said, it's associated with the energy making one mole of a substance. And some of these are available in your IB data booklet in table number 12. I'm going to take a look at the first substance that's mentioned there, which is methane. To make methane from its elements at room temperature and conditions, it's an exothermic reaction, releasing 74 kilojoules of energy. Now, to make methane from its elements at room temperature and pressure, we require both carbon and hydrogen. Carbon typically exists as graphite or carbon solid, and hydrogen is diatomic, and the coefficient 2 is needed to balance the equation. Another substance that's a little further down on the table, you can't quite see it here, is the substance methanol, and it's also an exothermic reaction. To make it from its elements at room temperature, again, I can only make one mole of substance, so when I balance the equation, I have to finish with one mole of product. That then allows me to have half a mole of O2 gas because I, don't, I am allowed to have fractional coefficients because I'm restricted to making one mole of a substance. What about to make iodine solid? What would be the enthalpy associated with it? Well, iodine exists as a solid at room temperature and pressure. So as a result, we would expect the formation of any element that's at room temperature and pressure to be zero. Um, however, if we do want to make an element that isn't at its standard conditions, so for instance, iodine gas, uh, iodine gas doesn't exist at room temperature and pressure. So as a result, it wouldn't have an enthalpy of zero. So some elements will have an enthalpy of zero, provided that substance is at our standard conditions. The more negative the value is, the more stable it is. We've seen this before when we started this unit off. The further down the energy well it moves and becomes more stable. So I would expect methanol to be a more stable substance than methane is from my two examples. And finally, this heats of formation data can be used to predict the heats of other reactions by applying Hess's law. Let's look at the theory behind that by using an enthalpy cycle. Suppose we have some generic reaction, A plus B making C plus D, and it has various coefficients. And we would like to know what the heat is associated with that particular reaction. We know from heats of formation, we know the energy it takes to start off with elements and turn it into any one of these substances, whether it be A, B, C, or D. The lowercase letters A, B, C, and D in these represent the number of moles, so they could be the coefficients, for instance, a 2 or a 3. Now, again, I want to go from A, B to C, D. One route is to follow the white. The other is to go around and follow the blue route. But to do that, I need to reverse my first two arrows. When I reverse their directions, I also have to reverse their enthalpies, or multiply by negative 1. Now the blue route is identical to the white route, and therefore I can apply the Hess's law, which says that the enthalpy for the reaction that I want then must be the sum of all of those steps. The first two terms you might recognize represent reactants. The second two represent my products. Again, I'm going to write a little bit of uh, summation notation here. Sigma represents the sum of. If I add up all the heats of my reactants, and I multiply it by minus 1, and then I add to that the sum of all the heats of formation of all of my products, that'll get me the enthalpy change for my reaction. So you could use the formula in this form, but many texts do a little bit of rearrangement so what we do here is we bring this term over, where it's unaffected, and slide this one over here. And you might be familiar with the idea or have seen the concept. It's the enthalpy of the products minus the enthalpy of formation of the reactants. So that's generally how the equation is presented. Products minus reactants. Let's apply that now to an example. Here's an example where I have both elements and compounds together. I need to look up their heats of formation data. 
That could be in your IB data booklet. It could be provided to you. You can find many of them on the web. I, for instance, found copper oxide and aluminum oxide by consulting the web and finding out their heats of formation. Next thing I'm going to do is underneath each of these particular compounds and elements, write what their heat of formation is. So I'm just taking the data from the table and moving it over. I also remember that the heats of formation of any element that's at standard conditions is zero. So the heat to make aluminum solid from aluminum solid would be zero. Likewise, copper solid from copper solid would also be zero. There's the equation, the enthalpy of formation of all of my products minus the enthalpy of formation of all of my reactants. So I take each of the terms and I put the zeros in here just to show you and multiplied them out by their coefficients. And again, the coefficients come from what's present in the balanced chemical equation. Just to show you a little bit about the units, they'll cancel. When the coefficient is multiplied by the molar enthalpies of formation, we'll see how the mole cancels out, leaving us our final answer, which will just be in kilojoules. So collecting all the terms in blue and all the terms in red gives me the following. Notice the double negative. Uh, so I'm going to be adding 468 to negative 1676, and I get negative 1208 kilojoules. So that's how we can use heats of formation data to determine the heat of a reaction, and also use Hess's law. Thanks for watching, and questions are always welcome.